Hi, I'm Andrew Torgett with Texas History for Teachers. When the Civil War came to an end in 1865, after four bloody years that destroyed farms, burned cities, and killed more than 750,000 people, it was finally time to rebuild or reconstruct the country. And that meant finding a way to bring back the 11 states, including Texas, that seceded in 1861 and started the war in the first place. But here's the thing. Absolutely no one knew how to do that. No one. There was nothing in the Constitution that explained how to bring half the country back into the United States after they tried to destroy it. And the one person who should have been in charge to decide all of that, Abraham Lincoln, had been killed by an assassin at the end of the war. All to say, absolutely no one knew what was going to happen during the period called Reconstruction, when the United States worked to pull itself back together again in the aftermath of the Civil War. It was one of the most important periods in all of American history as the country struggled with how to answer three big questions. And the first big question was, what should happen to the defeated ex-Confederates? These were the guys who had started the Civil War and they had committed textbook treason. The Constitution has a really simple definition of treason, waging war against the United States. And that's exactly what the Confederates did for four long years. So now, with the Civil War over, the question was, what should happen to these guys? The usual punishment for treason is execution. So, do you hang them all? You probably can't do that. But do you punish them in some way? Do these guys somehow get their US citizenship back? Or should they lose those rights forever? There were no clear answers for any of that. The second big question was similar. How on earth do you bring states like Texas back into the Union after they had renounced the United States and waged war against it? Now, obviously, the Confederate states had to come back into the country somehow, but were they going to come back in just like nothing had ever happened, with all the same political power in the United States Congress that they had had before the war? Or should they instead have to endure some kind of punishment that would give them less political power than, say, loyal northern states. Again, absolutely no one knew what the answer might be. But the third question was, without doubt, the most important one. What was to become of the four million men, women, and children who had been enslaved before 1865 and now suddenly were not anymore? In Texas, there were more than 230,000 people who had been freed. And the 13th Amendment said they were no longer slaves, but the amendment did not say what should happen to them now. Were they going to become US citizens or something else with fewer rights? Some people had talked about sending these freed African Americans out of the United States. So were they even going to be allowed to stay? And if they did stay, would they stay in the South, surrounded by their former masters, or would they leave for Northern or Western states instead? In Texas, vicious fights broke out over how to answer these questions. Ex-Confederates immediately tried to force their way back into power, hoping that they could control everything again. And they quickly wrote laws that said the ex-slaves were not citizens and had pretty much no rights whatsoever. But that angered many Northerners, who did not want ex-Confederates in places like Texas to be in charge again. And so the United States Congress then sent the United States Army into Texas, where they put the state under military rule. They also took away the right to vote from most ex-Confederates and gave it instead to newly freed African-American men. That meant that the former slaves were now suddenly in power, and their former masters were not, which led to ex-Confederates fighting back by creating the Ku Klux Klan. <sighs> Horrific violence, as you can imagine, then erupted across the state, pitting ex-Confederates and the KKK against newly freed African Americans and their allies in the state government. And on and on and on it went. All to say, everything, I mean everything, was on the line during those fateful years of Reconstruction, which is what made the battle so brutal. And what happened during those years shaped Texas and the nation in ways that we still feel and live with today. 
And so the question remains, how did Texas answer those three big questions?